Hello, my awesome and amazing Scorpios. It's Mel with Blue Scorpion Tarot here to bring you another general collective reading. Let's see what's going on in the overall energy dynamics, calling upon the trusted ancestors of my Scorpio viewers and subscribers to bring in the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth through the power of the numbers. And so it is. See here, power of number nine, power of number six. Wonder if we'll get a three. We got a three. Mm hmm. I'm psychic. All right, power of number three. So, because I was seeing the 963, and then when we think of Nikola Tesla with a 369 universal code, and then sometimes we see 693 or 639, that's the energy I was picking up. So, I'm like, wonder if we'll get a three. Yeah, and I saw it in my mind's eye. <laughs> All right, so 9 and 6 is 15, plus the three is 18. Okay. 18 and tarot can represent the moon card. You could feel that somebody's got a hidden agenda against you, Scorpio, or uh, this could talk about suppressed emotions. Uh, this could talk about the home life, your home right now. <clears throat> Maybe you've been doing a lot of decorating for the holiday season, whichever holiday that you choose to celebrate. If you do, some of you are dealing with a Virgo or a Libra born in the month of September. You could also be dealing with a Gemini or a Cancerian born in the month of June. You may be dealing with a Pisces or an Aries born in the month of March. You could also be dealing with a Capricorn or an Aquarius born in the month of January. You may be dealing with a Leo or a Virgo born in the month of August. Other zodiac signs picking up on, let's see, Cancerian energy again through the number 18. Picking up on strong Virgo and Aries energy through the number 1. Aries energy and Scorpio energy coming in through the number 16. Very strong Scorpio energy through the number 13. Leo energy again through the number 19, because that would be the sun card. We could see any of the queens kick in. Maybe something that has to do with the mother figure. This could also be about taking back your personal power, Scorpio. Some of you were born in 1961, 1963, 1968, or 1969. You could have been born in 1981, 1983, 1986, or 1989. You could have been born in 1991, 1993, 1996, or 1998. You could be 31, 36, 38, or possibly 39 years of age. And for my more mature audience, you could be 61. 63, 68, or even 69 years of age for some of you, okay? So I'm going to the power of number 18 for the beautiful star sign of Scorpio. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen. Trusted ancestors of my Scorpio viewers and subscribers, what is the overall general collective energy, please? What does Scorpio need to know at this time frame? Show me what's up. The Four of Swords. You might need to take a little bit of a time out for yourself, Scorpio. Maybe you're not getting enough sleep. Some of you could be dealing with insomnia or just waking up at weird hours in the middle of the night. I could even attest to that because my sleep patterns have been... I've been sleeping on the couch for so long. I know it's not the greatest thing to do. Trust me. I do know. But for whatever reason, I just, I don't know. I kind of live in a little bit. Of, it's like a, I guess I would call this kind of like a little townhouse type of apartment unit that has upstairs down, main floor upstairs and then basement. Um, 
basically, you know what? It's just like, I don't know. I just haven't been sleeping in my bed. I've just been sleeping on the couch. <laughs> it's like, but you know, I keep, there are times, I mean, I, last week, I think I woke up like three times, like between the two and the three o'clock hour. And, you know, I was in discussion with a friend over text message. I said, you know, I said, this time change, I've never really, like the time change during, you know, latter part of autumn into winter time. Okay. Never really used to affect me. Like when we have to fall back and change the clocks and everything, like that never used to bother me. But now for whatever reason, I don't know if it's because I'm coming into a new awareness of my personal energy. I don't know. Maybe because by the time it hits, you know, four o'clock, four thirty, it is pitch dark out. And I'm just like, you know, I, I'm waking up in the dark. I'm going to bed in the dark, you know, and it's like I relish for the daylight. You know, and so I was even debating on possibly going to get like vitamin D supplements um, just because I'm just, I don't know. I can't, for whatever reason, this time around, I, it's bothering me. It's really, really bothering me because my energy starts to plummet by the time 5, 5.30 hits. And I'm like, I'm feeling like I need to go to bed because I'm a five o'clock in the morning club. Okay. I wake up around five, but late last week it was two, three o'clock. And I'm like, well, shit. And so by one o'clock, two o'clock in the afternoon, it's like, oh my God. I'm like, I need to take a break. I need to go to bed. Like I need to take a nap. And then trying to make sure that my nap is not going on for hours and hours and then wake up when it's dark again and then have this surge of energy and then try to go back to sleep. Oh my God. So if you guys have been on a weird sleep cycle, your sister Scorpio here, you are not alone. You're not alone. But spirit saying, take some time out. I was even thinking about carving out some time today. Um, wanted to put together uh, my trusted ancestor altar. Um, I've been kind of, you know, getting some ideas. Um, to, you know, work with spirit a little bit more. And I work with my trusted ancestors every single day. I call on them, you know, pretty much for every single thing that I do to get me through to the next phase, the next project, whatever the case may be. But um, this could be, you know, maybe scheduling some quiet time, Scorpio. You could be doing a lot of things for a lot of people right now. And of course, you know, maybe some of you guys are running errands for people, trying to help people out. Um, some of you might even be helping friends move at the end of the month. Um, I heard that very loud and clear. You might need to carve some time out to just focus in on you. Go get some, you know, pamper time. Maybe it's to go get your hair done, your nails done. Go have a facial. Go work out. Just anything. Maybe go read a book. Some of you guys have been wanting to get back into reading. Um, I know I have um, this past month. So I'm actually thrilling on the fact of going to the library. So some of you could be in the same boat with me, but I highly encourage it. Um, some of you guys might even be involved in a book club or maybe want to join a book club to meet some new people. Okay. Um, but it is about quiet time. Is something about to decompress, decompress and just release and let go of everything that is bothering you and just let it go. You guys need at least a solid hour for yourself. You have to do it. Spirit saying, no, you have to do it because all of these goals that you have and what you're trying to project forward towards 2024, um, the last reading prior to this one is go big, go home. And this is about launching the ships. Well, but spirit now is coming in from another direction to say, okay, you launch your ships, you get your career up and running and your businesses and all of that. But listen, make sure that you are resting in between so that you 
become the best productive machine ever, okay? So that you're pretty much hitting on target. You know what I mean? So, and it's not all in common when we're in Sagittarius season, since we're in, we're, we're in Sag season right now, and a lot of you Scorpios have strong placements of Sag in your birth chart. I know for myself, I've got four placements of Sag. I have more fire than I do water, but I mean, because I am a Scorpio, but I can feel the burn. So for those of you who have not checked your birth chart to see <clears throat> where your placements of Sag are at, because some of you Scorpios could be feeling like you're always on an adrenaline rush. And if you battle with whether you are diagnosed with ADHD or undiagnosed ADHD, um, you could be going through a phase right now, especially if you got Sag in your birth chart, where you feel like you're constantly the energizer bunny, okay? Because that's how I feel I've been because there are things that I'm launching personally in January and, um, and of course, keeping up with the channel and other creative pursuits that I have. So being on a streamlined schedule has been challenging because this adrenaline rush that I feel like I'm picking up from Sag and all that Sag fire energy, it's like, it almost feels... I almost feel guilty. You know what I mean? It's like I almost feel guilty to take a time out because to me, in my mind, the way my mind is structured, because I am undiagnosed ADHD, um, it's like I, I feel like I'm internally beating myself up because I'm like, oh, I could have used that 20 minutes for that, but I'm so tired. You know, it almost feels like you're, you're in this constant battle of productivity versus um, resting. Maybe you were guilt tripped at an early age that if you took a nap, you were lazy, you know? Um, I never was told that as a child, but I can attest to it by, cause I was in the restaurant industry for 25 plus years and you didn't have real time to rest, especially if you were working double shifts. A lot of you guys are servers in the restaurant industry. You could be bartenders. Um, sometimes you're working double shifts and there really is no downtime. A lot of times, even in the restaurant industry, but those who are servers or bartenders, we don't really sit down to eat. We, we eat standing. And so my brain got programmed, but if, um, I learned from one particular restaurant that I worked for in Orlando. Um, it was for a Japanese cuisine house, you know, a sushi house, very famous one. And their method is you could not stand. If you just stood around doing nothing, you were lazy. Okay, so part of me adapted to that concept. So it is very difficult for me to take a time out because I feel like I'm wasting something, like I'm a bad person if I waste time because <clears throat> when you work for yourself, you have to time management. Time management is of the utmost importance. And if you battle with diagnosed or undiagnosed ADHD, having a, a strict schedule can be challenging. It can be very challenging. And so what I've learned to do is not to over cram my day, but just enough. And even if I don't, like I try not to do more than 12 things in a day, w whether that's answering emails, if that is to uh, do my reading, um, to do things for the channel, um, working on my business, running an errand, going to the gym, okay? If I do not entirely mark off or highlight in my day planner, if I didn't, I, I'm trying to learn not to beat myself up because every day it's a challenge 
you know, and especially when I have a lot of irons in the fire, sure, yeah, I want to take a nap. I want to rest because I'm pretty much, when you work for yourself, this is no necessarily like, you're not working like a normal nine to five. Some people are, but when you're an entrepreneur, you're working more than that sometimes. If you're single, you have more of that advantage because you're not being tied down with a, a spouse or you're not being tied down with children, okay, where you can go ahead and put in a 15-hour day if you had to or a 12-hour day. But I'm also starting to learn, too, like, to take a rest, I, I shouldn't feel guilty, and neither should any of you. It's a challenge. It's a challenge to get past that if you work for yourself. But either way, even if you work for another company and you have all of these irons in the fire, spirit is highly encouraging you to say, you are safe by taking a break. We need to do that, you guys, for our mental health. You know, I know a lot of people laugh at mental health, like, oh, it's just all in your mind and you're crazy and, you know, it's just, you got to get your thoughts in gear. Well, sometimes people who battle, whether it be diagnosed or undiagnosed ADHD, we can't shut our brains up because we have two different wavelengths of information that are not coinciding. And you know what I mean? It's kind of hard to just get the thoughts focused. That's the reason why like people who have ADHD, they have to be on timers to time things out so that they're not procrastinating. They're not um, spending time excessively on social media platforms when priorities need to get streamlined so that you have the best productivity, but also taking a rest. I mean, I am Sicilian and Italian among many other cultures, but for damn well sure, in Italy and Sicily, they take a siesta. They will take a nap in the afternoon. That's the reason why they're so productive. But here in America, we are programmed to push and push and push and push and not to take a break. That's the reason why we're, we're having mental health issues. This is why we're having stress-related issues, high blood pressure issues, um, muscle, neck, back tension, all of this, because we are not taking care of ourselves. We're not taking care of our body enough. Our physical health. So with working out at the gym, that's, I ha, I'm in my zone when I'm working from home, but then I get into a different zone when I'm at the gym. But I, I know a lot of times people struggle, struggle going to the gym. doesn't matter if you have ADHD or non ADHD. Okay. Exercise is good for our mental health. That should be the main priority. It's not just about your body looking good. In truth, when you think about it, you owe it to your brain to go work out or go take a couple walks around the block. Go take a walk at the park. You know, anything to move to bring oxygen to the brain so that you can focus better. And not only that, sleep better. So, I started getting back on track again with going to the gym. Now, the last two days, I've been waking up at, normally at my 5 a.m. club. That's what I call it, the 5 a.m. club. So it's still been hard for me to decipher. Do I feel entirely rested? A lot of you guys wake up very groggy, very groggy in the morning. Um, your energy levels could be at an all time slump, you know? So if you work from home and you have that advantage, try to take a nap, just take a time out. Maybe it's just to put your headphones on, listen to a guided meditation for 20 minutes, close your eyes, set the timer and then get back to it. Cause sometimes that's all that we need. Sometimes we only need like 20, 25 minutes. 
or you just need an hour to decompress, but you're still in waking state, read, do deep breathing, something like that. Okay. So whatever situation you find yourself in, but spirit saying it's okay. Don't beat yourself up to take a break to rest. And some of you maybe even, you know, be thinking about going on a short sabbatical of vacation. Yeah. See, look, it's all about the work. I'm telling you, if you're working, take a time out. You guys have been working really hard. And yes, spirit wants you to push forward for your success, to launch the ships of your dreams, <clears throat> of your dreams, excuse me. But this is a reminder. To me, this is a reminder reading. Because a lot of you guys, like me, are on the go, 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 go. Courtship. This is about the relationship between you and yourself. And your mental focus. But on the other hand, with a romantic situation, somebody might have wanted to take a time out from the connection. So what do we do? We work on ourselves if you're in a situation like that. Something here about the courthouse. I feel like this is more or less being tried and true to you. Knowing your truth. Knowing when your truth is to take a rest. To me, with the courthouse, it's Libra energy. And Libra is about balancing. Balancing the scales. Now, on the other hand, on a romantic level, somebody either got married or it's in the works that some of you Scorpios will be getting married. You may even get married at the courthouse. Somebody's going to propose. Somebody also wants to go away with you somewhere, maybe profess some feelings, and then something's in the works for an upcoming marriage as well. That's how I see it. Somebody wants to get to know you. As you reveal your innermost selves, your bond deepens. So there is a new, either new soulmate or this is a specific person headed in your direction. It says, keep an open mind. Your soulmate may differ from your usual type and expectations. That doesn't mean that you, on a romantic level, see, look at that engagement. I was just calling out marriage energy. There's engagement. Somebody's gonna get proposed to. Just because to keep an open mind your soulmate may differ from your usual type and expectations doesn't mean you're going to get stuck in this lifetime with someone that you're not attracted to, okay, that has nothing to do with it. It's about the approach to dating. It is really, in truth, consistency. This is what I feel this card is talking about, is that from your usual type and expectations... The usual type, in our mind, instantaneously, we're thinking about that person's looks. But what this is really all about is the fact of, yes, you're going to have somebody attractive in, in your life that you are attracted to, but their energy levels and their characteristic traits are going to maneuver differently. Because you guys have been with attractive people before, but they've been horribly, you know, they've been inconsistent. In and out, wishy-washy, vague text messages, think they can come in whenever they want. So that could be the usual type that you keep attracting, Scorpio, the inconsistency. Whereas this new person is going to be consistent. So this person is going to be outside of the norm, the norm of consistency versus inconsistency. And you're still going to have all the bells and whistles. Mm -hmm. 
So right now, you know, a lot of you are like, God, I want the career and I want the relationship, but you could be weighing your mind down right now, Scorpio, to have it all, all in one day that, you know, and I get it. That's not, all of us are thinking, yeah, no, it's not going to manifest all in one day. No, it's not. I mean, it could, I mean, the universe is highly miraculous, but it's really about not weighing with this relationship or this particular person or a new soulmate. It is about not consuming your thoughts so much that you get overwhelmed, that you are creating needless anxiety. We shouldn't have anxiety in our life. You know, I mean, I wish I could just completely get rid of anxiety. <laughs> you know, I think what anxiety is, is like for me as a single person, my anxiety is again, putting too much, too many irons in the fire in one day. I'm going to choose to be a wonder woman and get what I can done for the day and still do my best to pat myself, validate myself, what I did achieve, what I did get done. So there, there's an engagement, impending engagement coming up. So basically... Don't overthink too much about the future, especially if this is a new person that has popped into your life. I get it. It's, it's hard to relax when we want to know everything right then, right there. Trust me, intuition will hit you at the right time. And then you will know to the best of your abilities how to navigate through that intuition. So that you feel you're making the right choices for yourself, the good choices, especially when it comes to letting somebody enter into your life. Am I going to marry this person? Am I going to walk down the aisle? Am I going to pick out my China pattern? Am I da, 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 da. too far in the future? You need to think about what's here, what now. Stop stressing yourself out about this person. Take a time out as far as a relationship is concerned. Don't think too far ahead, but there is something stewing and brewing here for real commitment. But this is like a, it, there's going to be like a getting to know each other phase. <clears throat> Some of you are dealing with air signs, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini. I've also got Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Could be any zodiac sign. Libra I was picking up on. Picking up on Gemini, Gemini energy very strongly through um, the courtship card, but also picking up on Pisces, Aries, Taurus. Dealing with another Scorpio. Strong Sag energy, Leo. I think what spirit is saying is it's okay to take a break. It's okay to rest. Just only focus in on your priorities for the day, Scorpio. What needs to be done right here, right now? That will help your productivity by streamlining a more scheduled week. And so what if the schedule has to continuously keep changing? You can keep, I've, I've changed up my personal schedule so many times over and I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to beat myself up because it's not exactly perfect in my mind. That's what happens with people who have either diagnosed or undiagnosed ADHD. We focus too much on the perfection, trying to be too perfect, you know? And what happens when we get into too much perfection, we go into like a freeze paralysis zone where we, then we don't make any movement and then we get stressed out and the anxiety kicks in. So your productivity is based off of your energy levels. Take the time out that you need, go decompress. Don't feel guilty. Shut your phone off if you need to for 20 minutes half hour, an hour, whatever the case may be. 
You deserve to do that. But when it comes to relationships, and especially if it's a new one, don't get caught up too far into the future when it's a new connection. Think about the present moment and enjoy the moment because we forget to do that. We forget to enjoy the moment with that person because we're thinking like, again, am I picking out China patterns? Am I going to pick out the wedding dress? Am I going to get the tux? What kind of ring is he or she going to give me? It's like, can't even go there yet. You know what I mean? So keep a realistic perspective If you're at ground zero and you're starting over from scratch with a new person, enjoy the moment with them. Because you're in, like I said, your intuition will kick in the way it needs to. You just navigate. But think about right here, right now. And if you need to go take a rest right here, right now, please do so. You'll become more productive Your energy levels will be better. Make working out one of your number one priorities because it's for your mental health, not just your physical body. It is for that oxygen and the blood flow to the brain so that you are focused and get out of any kind of mental fog because a lot of us have gone through mental fog and that's because we're taking on too much. We're increasing our stress levels and and, and we don't even need to do that. So yes, is it a challenge? Yes, it is because I battle with it every day, but I make small progressive movement. And I, like I said, if you have to change your personal schedule over and over again, don't beat yourself up over it. You will find a schedule that is going to be comfortable for you that's going to make sense to you. But eventually somewhere down the road too is that, yeah, consistency is going to have to be built. Knowing what you can mentally take on and what you can't. Doesn't, it doesn't make you a failure if you cannot get everything done in one day. So... My awesome and amazing Scorpios, if you would like to book a personal reading with me and do it through the power of the numbers, you can hit me up at bluescorpiongifts at gmail.com and my amazing assistant, Victoria, will book you for that personal reading. But until next time, take care.